So welcome back to Bina, our very, very first raid that ever entered the game. I don't know about you guys, but I actually wasn't even able to finish very hard mode when this was first released. And so today, my guys, we get revenge on Bina. I show you guys how to do hardcore mode as best as you can, because for the most part, this is essentially a giant metal snake that is standing still. Not overly much mechanics to it. And so I do want to show you guys how to optimize your damage so that you can maximize your score. Hi, welcome back to another Blue Archive video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about the Bina raid on hardcore difficulty because to be honest, I'm still trying to find my feet in the extreme difficulty. It's quite hard. And so if you guys do have any tips on the extreme difficulty, do let me know down in the comments below. I'm still struggling with it a little bit. Maybe I'll come out with the clear. I, I doubt it to be honest. But that aside, let's have a look at the general teams for Bina. Like I mentioned before, there aren't like, there pretty much are no mechanics aside from like a big map wide AOE attack. And so yeah, let's kind of talk about like the options. However, before we get there, let's look at the team building. So as always, massive shout out to Corsu or Cause W. I am so sorry if I keep butchering your name. This is a blue archive general raid strategy guide. So essentially, if you click into any of these bosses, it will pretty much tell you how to run them if they do have mechanics. However, for hardcore, and if you are around my level about like 62 to 65, you should be able to one shot it like quite easily. And so let's talk about this team comp over here, where we have a whole bunch of three-star naturals. As you can see, Cherino, Maki, Akane, Karin, and Akko, who obviously does not exist in the version yet. So this is certainly very, very close to the team comp that I used, and that is because I actually have Maki and Akane at five stars. So honestly, I'm actually going through this because I wanted to show you guys the options, but not exactly what I'm using. For me, there isn't any tank slot over here, and I actually use Iori there. And later on, I will run through my units, but again, let's have a look at the options, which is Pina. Pina is actually a fantastic single target attacker. Junko and Nero are both really, really good as well. Midori, I do believe, is quite strong. You just need to make sure that she is built out because there are indeed better options than Midori. And if you guys do want even more options, you can head over to Stocky's Weird Champ Raid Rating. Just have a quick look at the Bina column. So as you can see, let me scroll out a little bit because it's, uh, it's a bit close. Maki at an 11. Iori at a 10. We've got Midori on 9. Tomoe on 9. Cherino at a 9.5. Junko 9, Hifumi 8, Pina at 9.5, like honestly, and I'll talk about that later. Pina is actually just fantastic. Akane at 10, Koharu at 9, although for hardcore, you hopefully don't need to use the Koharu, and so on and so forth, right? And with all of that being said, hopefully you guys get a gist of what the team comp looks like. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I used and why exactly. All right, so now we're back in the game. Let me just go into a mock battle. And here you are going to see my team comp. We've got the Kotama, we've got the Hibiki on the specials and then Cherno, Akane, Maki and Iori over here. Now the reason for the Cherno is actually not for DPS. It is mainly for the debuff over here. So if I click into this one, her basic skill is honestly like really freaking good where it decreases their crit damage resistance by 25.3% for 15 seconds every 40 seconds. What this means is that when you crit the boss, which should be very, very frequent considering we have like all of these leveled up characters, we've got the T5 watches as well as like the Kotama and all of that. Like this should just allow us to really, really burn down the boss. It's essentially, it's kind of like defense down, but it's like crit defense down if that makes sense. All right, and so next we have Akane over here. In a lot of raids, Akane at five stars and at maxed gear can actually be at the tank. And so Akane, generally speaking, has one function, which is to cycle through this skill right here. Elegant removal, where it provides a defense down by 29% for 30 seconds. And so as you can see, leveling up the EX skill once doesn't actually give me more defense down. I think I do need to go uh, like a little bit further than that to see more increases to that. So that is why she is still at level one EX. And honestly, like the other skills, and I'll show you guys the damage charts really, really soon, but she doesn't overly do that much damage. So this is what the Akane looks like. Next, let's have a look at the Maki, who is in my slot three. She is a... Uh... She is honestly pretty freaking juiced out. All right, so Maki is our first main DPS where she just does like a shit ton of damage. And that is essentially her entire kit, right? Like, so look at this. Decreased defense by 29.3% for one enemy every 25 seconds and inflicts them with the mark. So when we finally get into the raid, you guys need to watch out for this paintball lob skill. But honestly, like aside from that, the EX skill is fantastic. It is just so much damage and it is also a steroid for 30 seconds, 41.9%. 
And then the enhanced skill gives her a whole bunch of attack speed and then sub skill also increases her attack. Like, bruh, it's, she, she is so freaking good for single target yellow. And that, my guys, is why she is rated at 11 for Abina because, you know, we're just freaking attacking a meat bag. All right, and so lastly, we have Iori. You guys already know Iori. She's used like virtually freaking everywhere. And with good reason, right? She just outputs so much DPS. And considering this is like predominantly a single target standstill kind of thing, she is certainly going to thrive here. Now, as for my specials, we've got Hibiki and Kotama. So if you don't have enough of the stats, like if you don't have a five-star Maki or five-star Akane, or if you do feel yourself dying, then just run like a Serena or run a Fuka. But here is what my Hibiki looks Looks like she is kind of like looking pretty good level 3 ex although we don't cycle into it and then here is my kotama where the priority actually lies in the ex skill because the ex skill is just so freaking good it's a massive massive aoe steroid all right so with that said let's go into the raid itself i've actually got something pre-recorded because as you guys know i have boomer hands and i can't talk while i play all right gang here we are with my recording as you can see cherino akane maki and iori and the hibiki kotama let's just go ahead and go in to fight this hardcore boss. This is gonna be really, really hectic because like there are some rotations that you do need to get down pat. And on top of that, you can most certainly refresh or you should restart for like a perfect start. So as you can see, I have Maki, Cherino and Hibiki down here. That is 100% not what I want. So I'm gonna keep restarting until I get something like Kotama and Akane or just Kotama or just Akane because both of them are fantastic skills to start off with so that you can keep the uptime on the attack as well as the defense down. All right, so it looks like we have actually gotten our perfect role. So we have Akane as well as Kotama. And so generally speaking, I usually use the Akane first because the Kotama buff is, it's kind of inconsequential to the Akane's damage. But to be honest, you really could use one or the other. So I believe I go Akane first and then I go into the Kotama buff. That should be exactly what I do. So Kotama buff. And then, okay, so there are a few things that you do need to keep your eye on as we go through this raid. So the first thing is the attack buff icon that Kotama gives. So when I unpause, you're going to see they're going to get that attack buff over there. Now, that's the first most important thing for this raid, but not only this raid, honestly, like pretty much every raid. And before we unpause, I do want to talk about the next most important thing, or probably the most important thing, which is this guy up here. You can see that it's a shield, right? So that actually represents defense down because it is a blue icon. However, if you are running Akane and Maki, which you should be because they are both purchasable through like the shops. I'm pretty sure both are like total assault units. With these two units, remember that Akane EX, which we popped at the start of the match, applies defense down. But on top of that, we've got Maki with the skill one paintball lob, which also applies defense down. And so what that means is that you only want to activate your carries EX skills, this Iori skill down here and this Maki skill down here after both defense downs have been applied. So if I go ahead and press play, you can see Maki, she is going to do the paintball lob and only then do I actually, there it is, the paintball lob. And you guys will see it hit, and then this is going to go to times two, and then back again, and only then will I actually use the Iori and Maki skills. So let's play that, it is times two, and I am gonna use both of their EX skills ASAP. Now, the next thing that you need to look out for is when this defense down times two drops back down to one. Because only when it drops back down to one do you know that the Akane debuff has expired. So then we should use the Akane again. Because the Akane defense down actually doesn't stack with itself. So as you can see, times two, it is about to go to times one. And when it does, there it goes. I'm gonna use Akane EX skill right there and go back up to times two. And that is essentially what we want to maintain. We want to maintain the two defense down debuffs. We want to maintain this attack buff. So you can see I'm waiting here. I'm actually waiting for this flashing attack buff to expire before dropping my Kotama buff to re-give it again. So we have one defense down buff again. And then I'm going to wait for the Maki to do the paintball lob. And then I'm going to go all out with my Iori and then the Maki right after. So as you can see, I got my, I got everything. I've got my defense down, I've got the attack buff, and away they go. Honestly, that's pretty much it. That is pretty much the rotation for this one here. And if you cycle fast enough, you should be able to get like a score, probably not 6.8 mil if you are under leveled or if you don't have Cherno. So I do want to talk about Cherno because like Cherno, that, what is it, that crit, 
resists down is actually really freaking strong. So some other replacements for Cherino because I actually didn't have Cherino until I sparked Koharu. And so I was actually planning on using Pina instead of Cherino because as you could see from like this entire run, I actually didn't use Cherino's skill a single time. And she is realistically there for her passive or the sub skill or whatever it is that reduces that crit. Uh, res defense down. So yeah, that pretty much is going to take us to the end of this match. I believe like we're just going to burst him all the way down from three bars down to like zero bars. Like look at that. <laughs> And that's pretty much it. I believe it was about like 51 seconds left. It's a pretty decent run, maybe 6.88 mil, uh, 8.4. Yeah, 6.884 mil. So let me show you guys the damage charts. And look at that. As I said, Akane and Cherino are not doing that much damage. If you do bring in the Pina, she is going to be quite good. If you don't have Maki or Iori, just take your best yellow attackers. Like yellow snipers, of course, are the best, but if you don't have them, then you gotta use something else. Again, it might be your Midori, it might be your Momoi, it might be your Neru. There are actually a lot of yellow characters that could work here. It just so happens that Maki and Iori are the best ones. And so with that said, I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully that was kind of helpful in terms of like the mechanics or how to really stack up and cycle through those defense down as well as attack buffs and just managing all of these buffs and debuffs to make sure that you get the best damage that you can within the time limit. And actually, if you guys didn't know, we get one minute less for Bina compared to the rest of the raids. So if that is like, if you're looking at the time thinking like, oh man, why am I not hitting seven mil? That is actually why. But yeah, aside from that, that's kind of it. Hopefully that was helpful. And so let me know guys if this was actually helpful down in the comments below because this one is a bit tough considering I have an Akane, I have a Maki and they're both at five stars. Although you do see that neither of them actually drop low. None of them really actually drop low. And on top of that, I actually have a Cherino as well, which is it's super premium, right? So yeah, let me know if it was helpful. And if you do end up dropping a comment down below, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. If you did like the video, please consider a like. And if you would like to see more, please subscribe. But otherwise, as your girl Bina once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.